and it's starting oh we are now live and we've already got some people messaging us and saying hello before we went live so hi helen hi bram um i'll give everyone a few minutes as i usually do to get online um I'm so excited about this webinar. Uh, I'm, I'm apologies if I, my nose is red. I've got a little <laughs> bit of a nose. Um, I've, I've traveled back from the US today, but I, I wanted to keep this webinar because um, I, I've, I've been looking forward to it. So Melissa and I have, have planned this for several weeks. And Melissa, as I, as I wrote in the group uh, a few minutes ago, Melissa is someone who uh, is a is a friend. She's a colleague, and and really, she's someone that I have looked up to for for a few years now, and really learned so much from. Not necessarily through our conversations, which we have had, but but just who she is in the world. So I'm really excited about this. I'm not going to go into the full intro yet. I'll wait for for more people to to log in because I know some people take a few minutes. But I'm I'm really excited about this. Me too. Hi, Helen, <laughs> and. Is it Bram? Hi, Bram. Bram. Yeah. yeah. See, you're already a professional because most – this is the, the secret that I, maybe the other viewers don't realize. But um, when I normally do these, we, we kind of have – struggle to get people on and, and using the technology. And uh, Melissa's already on top of it very quickly. And, <laughs> and uh, so you're, 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 you're setting high standards now for everyone else. Oh, it's cool. good, good, good. Yeah. I don't know Bram, but I know Helen. Looking forward to questions. Oh, you know Helen, Helen, Helen. Yeah. Mills. yeah, she was at Reinventing Yourself weekend. Um, I don't That's know, right. like two, three years ago. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. You're right. You're right, and I believe she sang. Yes, yeah, she did. Oh, Danny Boy. Which she did for us in London last year as mm -hmm. well. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know there are a few other people ready to join because I can see they've written online. So I can't see them on the system. So I'll just give it another minute. And uh, oh yeah, Helen saying it was Arizona. Yeah. So uh, so right. So the system's catching up. So we've got oh, okay. We've got a few more people on. All right. Okay. So I will start now because I, I want to finish and, and respect the time. So I will finish it. Night. Let me just start by who Melissa is, and I think I said it a little bit. Um, uh, so Melissa is is someone that I met in the US. Uh, so weird, I, I saw her yesterday, kind of a few hours ago. I'm kind of just seen her and can come back. But um, Melissa is is a wonderful coach, and I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself and tell your story. But really, the reason I asked her to coach is is all psychologists who are very much grounded in the three principles. And I like sharing what I've learned from these people, which have helped me be a three principles based coach. And I don't tend to have, uh, I have some people, but not many who are not three P based. But the reason I really wanted to have Melissa on, on this webinar and, and for our group is because the word service is really banded around a lot. And, and talked about in, in coaching circles. And I, I found that my understanding of the word service has evolved and keeps on evolving. I mean, even just the last few days I was in the US and, and specifically from you, Melissa, I really got a deeper understanding of what service is. And Melissa really embodies that for me. And so I, I really wanted to bring I really wanted to bring her on to this webinar to share with with everyone else in the group in person, if you like, or, or as close to in person as we can get, just what how she shows up in the world, what she means by service. And as usual, we'll we'll speak for about half an hour and then and then open it up for questions. Mm -hmm. So really glad to have you with us, Melissa. Thank you. Thank of course, you. I'm really happy to be here. And, 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 I'm um, really glad that I'm glad that I'm hanging out with you down in Nashville. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Not 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 as much singing and dancing as maybe I thought would be before I went. But uh, but uh, I I would love to go back to Nashville. Actually, I th I thought it was a really cool really cool city. Yeah, me too. So just to jump in, Melissa, because there'll be a lot of people here who I'm guessing or people that are watching afterwards who don't really know anything about you. So 
could you just tell them a little bit, and I know this is one of these awkward questions, but, uh, you, you know, a little bit about what you do and, um, and kind of who you are right now. Yeah. So I love introducing myself as a coach and nothing else. Um, because I like people to be curious what kind of coach I am, you know, um, we get caught up a lot on I'm a transformational coach or a success coach. Um, I'm a coach and I've been coaching since 1995 and I, um, prime, I, I like, I love working with people in business, but I, I work with people, you know, if you're a business coach, you're not worth your salt unless you're a life coach. So I, love working with entrepreneurs and um, that includes coaches and really anybody who's looking to um, create some change and some transformation in their life. So that's me. I live right outside of Chicago. I live in a town called Oak Park. I'm married. I have two adult children and they're beautiful, beautiful people. My son lives in Chicago. I have a daughter who lives in Manhattan and um I don't know. The other thing I can tell you about me is that I'm somebody who really struggled with the concept of service. I thought I was this great coach and I couldn't figure out how to get clients or fill workshops or um, make any money. And I um, really had a problem with it for a very long time. In fact, Kush, you were funny when we were in Nashville. Um, there were some people telling me, um, appreciating who I was. And Ankush said something like, Melissa, I really appreciate that you took so long to get service because now I, I don't feel so bad about my own long journey. Do you remember when you said that? Yeah. So that's me. I'm, I'm somebody who really struggled with service, but I'm very grateful for that struggle because um, I now have service in my bones. I know what it means for me. And it's a powerful, beautiful concept as a coach to master. So <clears throat> there the are a few, and thanks for that. There are a few places I want to go with that. And, and you're right. You know, I, I love the fact that you're not one of those coaches, which was so helpful for me to go, oh, yeah, my life was like this. And then I did one thing. And now my life is amazing. You know, <laughs> it was, you really talk about your, your journey. Mm -hmm. So I, I will get to that for a second. Um, but firstly, just um, around your practice, just so people kind of get a, a little bit of a feel because everyone says as a coach, and I think there's coaches and coaches, who, who do you, who do you work with? How long do you work with them? Mm -hmm. you, know, could you tell us a little bit about that. If, if you're willing to, you don't have to, what sort of fees you charge as well. I think that'd be helpful to give people some context around, around your coaching. Okay. So, um, so I'll stick with right now. I coach entrepreneurs, but, but that's not exclusive. Um, but I, I work with entrepreneurs. Most of them are solopreneurs. So maybe they have a couple of employees. Usually they'll, they'll have people that they just hire on the side from time to time. Um, many of them are trying to make more money. Um, many of them are already making good money and really want to have more fun and, more joy and more success in their business. Um, I didn't start out coaching um, entrepreneurs at all. I started coaching. Um, I started coaching people around how to have happier lives. I did that for about twelve years unhappily, <laughs> and uh, that was not successful for me. But it had nothing to do with what I was coaching around. Um, and then I coached parents for a while because. Um, my own development as a coach came from um, being challenged with um, raising my children. So I coached parents for a while. So as I've continued to evolve, the people that I coach has, have changed. Um, in terms of fees, the fees that I charge, um, people work with me anywhere from a year, and my fee can range from 50000 all the way down to around 3,000, 3,500. And it depends on um, the person. It depends on how long we work together. Um, I don't usually start out working with anybody for a full year because I don't want to be working with somebody that I'm really not sure how it's going to be um, working with them for a full year. I mean, I've, I, I want to make sure we're, um, you hear it all the time. I want to make sure we're a good fit. Actually, I want to make sure 
that um, I can help them and that I'm not going to ask myself, why the heck have I um, attached my wagon to this person that's causing me uh, not to have a good time? So I really want to make sure they're coachable. I want to make sure they're, they're ready to create some change in their lives. Um, so I usually start at about three months working with somebody. And again, the fee does depend on what they're working on, what's the result they want, how often we're going to coach, that kind of thing. Does that help, Kush? Yeah, I, I think it gives some some context because, um, you know, I'm I'm aware of that, and and I know when I first heard people talk about fees of you know up to fifty thousand dollars, I was just like, that would that kind of just blew my mind, right? Like people are charging that much money, and like, yeah. what what what's going on? And and I and so like you know that's just me being honest, and so I I really wanted to bring that out in terms of you know, you're, you're not just someone who says, yeah, yeah, I'm a coach. <laughs> you know, you, you've got clients who are really, really happy. I know, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the school that you and I were both part of, the person that tended to get the most appreciation, you know, I, you know, bigging you up here, but it's, it's true is, was, was you. And really it came from a place of service. And this is what I really want to bring out. It's, it's like who you're being. It's not like, oh, she's got some kind of secret system that she's charging more money or she's got more confidence. It really flowed from who you are and the service you give out in the world. And before we kind of get into that, what I would love to hear, and we, we kind of touched on this a little bit before, was what's your journey been? Because I know for me listening to your journey and actually being part of it, because I think, you know, three years ago you weren't where you are now. Mm-hmm has been super helpful for me as a coach. So could, could you say a little bit about that and where you were and were you always charging $50,000 for clients? You know, was this easy for you? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So like you, I would hear coaches charging 50,000 or 75,000 or whatever, these astronomical numbers. And I would, I would blow my mind. And um, I remember thinking I, I could never get to that place And um, I was very judgmental of it. Why would anybody charge that? That's taking advantage of people. What are, you know, I was, I was very angry and fearful around fees. So when I first started, um, when I decided to go pro, it was in 2009 and I had no clients. Um, The very first year that I uh, went pro, I made $5,000. So by no means was I charging the fees that I'm currently charging. And um, I I even struggled to say a fee, a fee now that wouldn't be a problem for me to say. So when I I went pro, I wasn't making money. I didn't know how to enroll clients. I certainly did not know how to serve. I didn't even know what that meant. And um, I, I... I I figured that's what I had to learn. I was really resistant to it. I didn't even like the word service. Service to me meant service to me meant um, give and give and give and give, and then nobody will ever hire me. That's really what I thought it meant. And then when I started to learn the concept of service, I was still confused about what specifically it meant. And I remember at one time during a phone call with my own coach, and seriously, this is about a year and a half into coaching with him, I'm still struggling with the word service. And he, um, he says very clearly over the phone, I took it as yelling, but I don't think it probably was. Um, he said, how can you help someone, Melissa? How can you help someone? I'm like, okay, okay, gosh, how can I help someone? Because I didn't want to help anybody, Kush. I wanted to get clients and get paid. I thought service was this really kind of indirect, uh, kind of weak, um, just roundabout way to try to get a client. Kind of, oh, I'm just going to serve them and please them. As you can hear in my voice, I had a heck of a lot of judgment around it. And um, that that struggle, that struggle was real. And that went on for uh, a good two, two and a half years until I started to really see, okay, wait a second, maybe there is something to this helping someone. So that's where it started out. I had no clear idea. It, it was, uh, I have a really good um, friend and colleague, Camille Samuel, you know her. And she would talk about, first it was um, servicemen, give, 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 give. 
And then it meant give to get. And then it meant give to, I hope I get, gosh, I hope I get fingers crossed. And then it was simply really giving from this place of how can I help somebody? And if they were going to hire me, that would be the biggest form of service because now I can get into their life. So that was me at the beginning. I don't know if that's where you wanted me to start, but that's what came to mind. Yeah. And thank you for being so honest about that, because I think that you're not the only one to have those feelings, you know, judgment about why are people charging so much? Uh, I, I remember telling someone about Steve Hardison charging $150,000 and their response was that's, that's disgusting. Um, and, and it's manipulative and why would you need to charge so much money? And, and, and I've seen it in my group and I've seen it elsewhere. And what was really interesting for me when I met you and, and, and uh, a bunch of other coaches was the, the coaches that seem to be making the most money were not the ones that came across the most shrewd, not the ones that came across the most manipulative, not the ones that came across the most even commercial, right? right the ones, right. The ones that really seemed to me, this was what was interesting to me, that seemed to make the most money were the ones that were the most nice, genuine, caring, loving people that I could meet. And I used to, part of me, not completely, but there was part of me that's going, yeah, but it's easy for them to do that because now they're making money. And what I see, <laughs> and what I see is the shift was, no, they are making money because they are coming from this place of, of love and service. Yeah. Yeah. Y you know, I, I agree with you. Um, I think I had, I, maybe my judgment was even harsher you know, um, I saw these nice, happy, loving, kind people. And I thought, what the hell was wrong with them? <laughs> I really did. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that that was who anybody would want to hire. I really thought they'd want to hire the really successful. I'm, I'm the highest paid coach in blah, blah land. I mean, I thought they would want to hire the impressive people. So I went about really trying to look impressive, look like I had it together. Boy, I tell you, I spent a lot of energy trying to look like I had it together. And by no means did I have it together. Um, I had a real edge to myself. And that was, that was the reason I wasn't getting hired because I expected that people would want to work with me. Really? So now are you going to shut the show down? Because you heard that? No, I, I, I love your honesty. Um, and, and it's so refreshing and so helpful. It, well, it was helpful for me. I hope it will be helpful for others too. But um, I know I've spent time and I have to remind myself about it. It's so easy to get sucked into this world of looking impressive, getting more likes, building a bigger community. And, and I'm not saying some of those things aren't helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it, it's like the 80-20 rule, you know, 80% of your uh, results come from 20% of your effort. And, um, you know, it's that service piece for me, which I'm constantly reminded of. Um, I, I was wondering if, you know, because people may have heard things like this before. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've had the, um, the, the, the ability to kind of observe a little bit closer hand. But when you talk about service, can you tell us what you mean? And can you tell us like how that evolved? Like, so you've talked about it was give, 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 and hopefully get something back. But now it's not, can you like give us some concrete examples? Because I think sometimes when people, what that looks like. So even if you give an example of, I don't know, in your recent, what you've done recently and, and how you are now and how that is so different to how you were, I think that could be really helpful for the audience. Okay. So to, for me to give you an example of, of me serving today, is that what you're wanting? Yeah. Or serving in the recent past, just to give people an example of like, what does it mean? Because I want people to, to listen to this webinar and really understand that because, because I, I guess I've got this um, behind the scenes, I get to observe you Mm -hmm. And I've seen the people that you've served and the kind of things that you've done that people may not really have that knowledge or understanding. And so I was wondering if you could give, whether it's today, whether it's recent past, but some examples of where you have served and how that's different to how you used to show up as a coach. 
Okay. All right. So how I used to show up as a coach when I was learning, when I was at the beginning of learning how to serve was um, I was looking for people to help in hopes that I could have a conversation or two and then make a proposal to them about how we could continue to work together and I could help them. Because the whole point of having that conversation with them was to, yeah, I wanted to make a difference in their life, but I kind of wanted to show them what I could do so that they might think, well, maybe I'll hire Melissa. That's how service looked to me initially. And, and again, the idea of service was how can I help? How can I make a big difference in your life? But I was using it in a way to somehow manipulate, um, to strategize. And even before those conversations, there was a time where I didn't even know how to invite people to conversations. So that's a conversation for another day, Kush. But now what service looks like, I can actually share something with you today. I currently have a client and she came to me and she said, well, I know I can talk to you about this, Melissa, but I really want to work with another coach when we're done. Now, the old me would have been, what? I'm not as good. Um, why, why wouldn't you want to continue with me? And I said to her, why don't we talk about why you would want to do that? And for not from a place of you should continue to work with me or what's wrong with me, but why do you want to do that? And then let me see how I can help you create that. So we had this conversation today for half an hour. We talked about, we're going to work together for the next nine months. We talked about two ways that that could look. We're, have, we're going to kick off at the end of April. And then I really heard from her. She wanted the experience with this other coach. And I said, you know, I get it. And I would want you to have that experience for yourself too. Here's how I see three different ways you might be able to work with this person. But what I really think you need to do is just call them up. In fact, she's the one that came up with call them up. And then I said to you, yeah, you call them up. Call them up to see if he's available next year. Call them up to see how that might look. But you do that because I know that would really benefit you. It's benefited me to coach with different coaches and have that experience. So the Melissa, even a year ago, would have struggled with that. So I'm just like you, Kush, this idea of service and um, really being loving, really being helpful, being in somebody's life, seeing what could really benefit them the most, that continues to evolve for me. So never in a million years would I have imagined that conversation even a year ago. So I don't know if that helps, but that's service. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for that. C could you and and, that, and that's helpful. And I know we'll we'll never be able to bring out all, all the examples, but that's certainly what I see. I see you show up in a way where you're helping people, regardless of whether they're going to hire you or not. Yeah. And I know so many people who have who have experienced some time with you now. And and uh, and some of them have become your clients, but a lot of them haven't, and that's just who you are. And could you could you talk a little bit about the fear you had? Because that was really helpful for me to, to hear you talk about previously. The fear you had about this whole service piece and really showing up in that way. Yeah. Well, I would hear people. I would hear coaches um, say what I just said, and I would think to myself, how how did they ever get there? That's crazy. There's no way that I could have a conversation with a current client about how to get another coach as a coach. I mean, that's insane. So um, let me see what would be best to answer that. Ask me one more time, Kush. Ask me one more time your question. So so maybe maybe I'll, I'll, I'll give some context. You spoke about in, in, in Nashville, you spoke about some of the fear you had about okay. service. And, and if okay. you really served, it would it would mean and it didn't work. It would mean X. OK. And, and I wonder if you could share that okay. because there might be some other people who are feeling the same. Yeah, I can. OK, thanks. Thank you for that, because I've, I had a lot of fears around service. Um, but this particular incident you're talking about, this particular time was I, I struggled so long with service that I finally got to this place where I thought to myself, what's really holding me back? Like, what is the biggest fear that I have? And I thought, gosh, you know, if I really do, if I really help people and I'm not attached to the outcome, 
then what's my biggest fear? And my biggest fear was if I fully serve, if I really love somebody, if I help them all that I can, and um, and what I'm going to discover is no one will, is going to hire me. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be this service bunny. I'm just going to be serving and serving and serving, and no one's ever going to hire me. So what I did was I played a game with two other um, friends and colleagues of mine in Cush's, Dave Schwendeman and Gary Mahler, and we called it the service game. And what we did was we defined what service meant for us. And for me at that time, it was loving somebody fearlessly without any attachment to the outcome. That was my definition. Gary had his own definition. Dave had his. And then we identified our fear that kept us from really doing that. And mine was, if I do that, nobody's going to hire me. So then my service game became um, that I was going to fearlessly love people with no attachment to the outcome and nobody would ever hire me ever again. And I did that for 90 days and I was totally committed to this idea that I was going to really help and nobody was going to hire me. And it really wasn't a stretch because not a lot of people were hiring me. And uh, so I played that game and I started to um, see that people started to actually hire me. And I just kind of kept my head in that game. I really wasn't concerned about who was hiring me, what was going on. And during that period of time, um, I had a huge financial gain, not just because all of a sudden I had come up with some sort of magic formula, but again, I had been coaching for years and I'd been struggling with the idea of service for a long time. Um, but I was ready for that. And I also was um, more committed to Dave and Gary's success than I was my own, which blew me away because I wasn't the coach who was um, service oriented towards any other coach. I wanted to get the client. I didn't want anybody else to. So I, I learned that, wow, I had this big heart towards Dave and Gary, and that changed me. So uh, by really identifying what I was afraid of and playing without that fear made a huge difference. I started to see um, what service really was. And I could have had somebody talk to me about it, and I could have read books about it, but I needed to actually see that it delivered. So that's that's what happened for me. And you said you've been coaching for a while. So ju just give us a timeline again. So how many years from the point you started coaching to playing this game where service really sa you know sank in for you? Okay, 20 years. And please wow. know, anybody who's listening to this, don't scare yourself. It's not going to take you 20 years. Um, I tend to be a very... Uh, slow learner. Um, I also tend to be really stubborn. So that benefits me in the sense that I didn't give up on myself. I didn't quit. But I also hung in there a long time for many years, developing as a coach um, and struggling with getting clients. But there was an upside to that. I became really good as a coach. So I had the coaching thing figured out way before I had the service thing figured out. And then the beautiful benefit of all of that was once I started to figure out the service thing, I became better and better and better as a coach because I became, just like you said, Kush, the kind, loving, open-hearted, open-handed person that wasn't expecting anything in return. And as a result, people wanted to work with me. People got that I cared more about them than I did myself. You're on mute, I think, Kush. <clears throat> there you go. I was just testing you to, to see if you were <laughs> listening. It was all done on purpose. Um, I, I was going to say that really comes across for me, and I hope some of that comes across in the in the webinar today. Um, I, we're we're going to jump into questions in a few minutes. So if anyone's got any questions that for, for me or pro probably more so Melissa, I'm not really saying much today, but if, if you've got questions, please do write them in the chat box on the side and we'll, we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, and uh, I, I know we don't, we don't, we don't normally get through all of the questions. So I really encourage you, if you've got something burning on your mind, please ask it and ask it soon so that we can get to it B right. before, we, before we do that. Um, Melissa, I, I was wondering just as a, <clears throat> catch all or if you like you know you said you're a slow learner it's it it took you 20 years um <laughs> what would your advice be to to other coaches who are like 
I really want to help. I really want to do this. I, 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 I want to make some money because, you know, they've got bills to pay and, 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 and why not? And, and how can they, what can they do so that it doesn't take 20 years for them? Yeah. Um, be open to learning. I wasn't. I thought I had it. I thought I had everything I needed. I thought I had it all together. I wasn't interested in learning. I was interested in, um, I was interested in being right a lot of the time. So I'd say be, in, be, be open to learning, be open to um, really coaching people a lot. Because the more you coach people, um, you'll realize that you'll feel like you should pay them because you get to learn. You get to be better as a coach if you keep coaching. Get paid. Um, I don't care what you're charging. If it's 50 bucks an hour or $500 an hour or whatever your fee is, make sure you're being paid as a coach. Start to be paid. Um, the other thing is find a group of coaches to be with because this profession is so solo that we become very isolated and we get caught up in our own thinking. That's a three P thing. I think right there, caught up in your own thinking. We get caught up in our own thinking and we get lost and we get confused and we need to have other people around us to role model what service looks like to call us on our own BS to help us. So find some people to be with. And really the most important thing is to get a coach. And I used to hear coaches say that my coach would say it. And I would think how self-serving, you know, of course, of course, go get a coach, go hire a coach. Um, having a coach helps you see things you can't see in yourself. Having a coach makes you a better coach. Because I tell you, I thought I was this phenomenal coach. I mean, my business plan was um, be this amazing coach and people will come. Well, they don't. And then once I got a coach, I realized, wow, I wasn't uh, that great of a coach. So the, once I started to get a coach, um, I started to um, get some humility. I started to see where I could improve. I started to become more loving and caring of other people. I started to develop my own confidence. So those would be things that I would recommend. And if you can't afford a coach, find some people that you can coach with where you would be totally committed as if that person. So for instance, Kush, if I couldn't afford a coach, I might come to you and if you were, if you were open to it, um, I know you're not at this juncture, but if you had been open to it, I would have said, will you coach me? And, um, and I could coach you or we could find some people who could coach each other. And then I would be totally committed to you as my coach as if I had paid you. The total surrender, the total help me. Um, so those are some ideas. And, and I, I love those ideas. So <clears throat> and, and hopefully you know, I, I want people to know you don't need to go very far for that. So I think the three things you said, I don't know if I missed something out, was be open to learning. Yep. And I'd like to think that through these webinars and through all of the past recordings that I've got on, on the YouTube channel, and everything, there's a ton of information like there is. I want to make it so there's no excuse for anyone that wants to be a great 3P coach to say, well, I can't afford to learn about this. It, this group, it's all there. It's free. So there's a lot of stuff outside of this group, but I want to make people aware it's right here. It's so close to you. Um, the second thing about having a community of coaches around you, um, it's great to be in some kind of live experiences. I've got so much from that. I enjoyed meeting you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. But again, if you can't afford to do that, you know, the, the group that I run, Melissa, I've, I've added you to it today. There's over 500 coaches in there. So, you know, you can create your own community. You know, you don't need to let money be an obstacle and you can connect. You can. I'm happy for people to put out. They're going, look, um, I listened to the webinar with Melissa. I would this is where I'm at. I'm looking for a few other people to connect with and, and maybe support each other and just be clear about what you want. What, what would what would be helpful to you? I'm really happy for people to do that and use the group in that way. I think that's mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. And, and finally, about getting a coach, that was such a big shift for me. And I've now had my own coach 
I've had coaches before, but specifically around coaching for two and a half years, I've just signed up with him for another year. And I see the power and value of coaching. And someone asked me, like, why do you need him? And I said, I don't. I used to think I did, but I know I don't. And mm -hmm. it's really seeing that I choose to do that. I'm in a position where I can invest that money and, and choose to have a coach. Um, and I think it helps me go faster. But what I sometimes get is because I like to call people on their BS too. So if someone says to me, well, I'd love to learn and grow, but I don't have money right now to hire a coach. And I, I said this to someone recently. I said, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? Because because money's not the issue. Like it looks like it's the issue, but it's not the issue. If you really are genuine and have a desire to learn, there's so much help and support available. And that was a big thing for me that I was too proud to ask for it, but I found when I started asking for help, doors opened up. Now, is it the same thing as having your own coach? No, but is it incredibly useful and helpful? Absolutely, yes. So I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up, Melissa. Thanks. I have to cough. Um, Thanks. I have to cough. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, I think I've muted you, but the mute button's gone, so I don't know how to unmute you. So I don't know if you've done that. I'll do it now. How does that sound? As you, it, yes, you're you back. Me? Great. Yeah, so sorry about that. I've just had a uh, cold and laryngitis for a period of time here. So as you were talking, I was using mental vibes to stop the cough from coming. That, that's that's powerful. That's Amazing. powerful right there. <laughs> And well, and, and and genuinely, I appreciate you you coming on this on this call when you when you when you're not too well and sharing with us. Um, I wanted to get to Helen Helen's question. She said, "Could you speak a little more about the manipulation that was playing away in the background when you were serving and expecting nothing in return?" Um, I think I think you were saying you ex you were expecting something in return. Was it a bit big shift to the genuine serving where you started playing the game with David and Gary? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to mute myself again because I have to cough one more time. I really apologize. No, no problem. And uh, thank, like I said, thanks a lot, Melissa, for coming on when you're when you're not well. Yeah. No. This is this is fine. So um, you know, Helen, um, I didn't really think service would deliver. I, I really didn't. And I heard these, I heard the concept being discussed. I read books on it. I saw other coaches being successful and um, I still didn't get it. And by the time I, des I decided to play the game with Gary and Dave, I was pretty over myself. Um, I was pretty frustrated. I, I was struggling to make, I was making under six figures at that time. And it was a struggle to even make that money. And um, I think part of, part of the benefit of coming to this later in my life was that um, time was ticking. You know, I wasn't a sweet little 30 something that Ankush is. I was a woman in her fifties and I thought, well, you know, I, I might as well find out if this service thing really works because if it doesn't, then I'm just going to forget about it and go do something else. So I might as well prove to myself it does or it doesn't work. And then I can get on with my life because if it doesn't work, I'm just going to shit can this whole coaching thing. And I don't know what I'm going to go do, but I'm going to go do something else. So uh, when Gary asked me to play, um, I thought, well, you know, I haven't made a lot of money up until this point, and it's been a struggle for all the money that I've made. So what the heck? I could be broke for another 90 days because we played the game for 90 days. Why not? Why not just be broke? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just test out the service thing without being attached to anybody hiring me and knowing and playing without the fear. So without the fear, nobody was going to hire me ever again. So let's go. And I just showed up so differently. 
I would have a conversation with somebody. I was fairly intense. I'm a pretty intense person, but I love that about myself. I just show up and I'd be, you know, Hey, so what else can I do for you? Do you need anything else? Do you want to talk again? Let's talk again. And then I would do things such as and this just came to me and it wasn't even manipulation. Um, when people hire me, I'm in their life. I'm literally the person in their world. And so I want you to experience that. So between now and the next time we meet, um, you need anything, you email me. If you need some spot coaching, you contact me because this is what it's like when people work with me. And, um, and, and you go test out those things that you said you would, because I'd always have them go do some sort of homework that they created, something that was relevant to them. And then they'd come back for the second session and we'd run game film and I'd help them, I'd help them. And then I'd say to them, is there anything else I can do for you? And it was so sincere because nobody was going to hire me ever again. That was the game. I'm going to be broke for the next 90 days. And people would say, you know, Melissa, I want to work with you. What would that be? And I created a fee that was easy for them to say yes to. There's no way that I was ever going to say, oh, yeah, you want to work with me for 50K? Because I'd never hire a coach uh, on the first go round for 50,000. Um, so and then I'd give them a fee and they'd say, great. And I just started, it just started happening. And I sat there and I remember thinking, I'm not going to think about how this is working. I'm just going to keep doing this for the next 90 days, for the next three months. And then when it's all over with, I'll probably pick my jaw off of the ground and look at what's just happened. Um, so that's how it works. And I hope that, hope that helps you, Helen. Let me know if you need anything else. That's what happened for me. That's <laughs> Helen saying yes my clock is seriously ticking so I think she can identify yeah! with so I, I'm, I'm not being called a sweet 30 <laughs> so. yeah so any of you any of you that are you know hitting your 40s hitting your 50s and you're thinking to yourself oh my gosh you are lucky you are lucky that you are aging because you're not going to futz around you're not going to go well I have all the time in the world because I didn't have all the time in the world good glad your your clock is ticking Helen Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> it, what, what was really helpful for, to me was when I heard Steve Chandler say that, um, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are, yeah. right? Like if, if, you, if you're really old, then people can come to you because of your wisdom and so-called experience. And if you're young, they can come to you because, uh, you, you know, you're youthful and exuberant and it, it's all just made up. Because I used to have the same thoughts about like, I'm too young to be a coach, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I just laughed. Emma says, I want to be 50. <laughs> That's great. So I want to tell you this too. So being, being open to growing and learning as a coach, one of the things that I did for myself was I, I was going to go to Byron. I did go to Byron Katie's nine day school. And um, my friend and colleague, Dave Schwendeman is in his thirties. And he had gone to Byron Katie's nine day school. And I realized I'd really like some help before I went because I could feel all this resistance around what I was going to work on when I went to the nine day school. And then I thought, who could I hire who could help me? And Dave Schwendeman came to mind. And I went, oh my God, I don't want to hire Dave because my, my biggest fear was this guy could be my kid. And then now what, I, what am I saying that I could actually learn from somebody who could be my kid? And I remember thinking, you've got to hire Dave for two reasons. One, he's, he's really going to help you. And the other is he is going to totally destroy this myth you have that you can't learn from somebody who's 20 some odd years your junior. And it was the best investment I ever made in myself. And I just want to tell, I want everybody to know he's, he's as great as a coach is on cushions. And people who are worthy of you to look into to hire. Um, he helped me so much. So I love the fact that I hired, um, you know, Dave. And and he's in our group. And he's uh, in our group. Is, 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 and he's a great guy because he has a purple hoodie. So that that's all you need to know. <laughs> um, it 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 it's so it's it's so great. Um you know, so every, everything that you've said and, and, and the fears and, and misunderstandings you've had. And, 
you know, what I will say, if people are listening to this and, and they're like, well, I'm, I'm really a 3P person and I don't want to do Byron Katie school. I, I want to get to the, the point of it. I think of what you're saying is it really doesn't matter what, you know, that there is so much to learn in, in my experience. There's so much to learn anyway that we're never going to get to the end of it. Mm-hmm. And it, but it's fun. So it's just whatever speaks to you, whatever coach speaks to you, whatever training speaks to you, whatever book speaks to you. But I really love the 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 idea of learning, the idea of of just exploring. And um, it sounds like a lot of your journey was about kind of getting rid of your ego. Yes. Or or, or dropping who you. Th- I guess in three P language, and I'm going to try and bridge bridge what you're saying, and, and and maybe some of our audiences. It sounds like you were dropping your misunderstandings of who you thought you were. And letting the real Melissa emerge. Exactly. And service allowed me to do that. That's exactly what happened. And and the wonderful thing is, you know, for a long time, I um, operated from a modality called option. I did that for years. And when I decided to go pro, um, just, just sticking with option didn't seem to be working for me. And that doesn't mean it couldn't. It just didn't seem to. It's like I was growing and evolving. And I love 3P. I mean, I've learned so much from um, allowing thought to, to pass and not getting attached to it and realizing that, you know, my, um, you know, the, 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 the real me is, um, you know, the, the person without the, the, the thinking and that free flowing thinking. And I think it's been so useful to me. It's helped me tremendously. But service is the way to create a business. So there's the coaching that you do, and then there's the selling your coaching services. And so the selling your coaching services, that arena, um, service for me has been the way to do it. Um, anything that the pushing, the pleasing, the branding, the website, the, you know, social media following all of that, um, it's a great adjunct to service. But the way to build your business is with service. So regardless if you're a three P coach, or you love doing Byron Katie work, or um, you know uh, you're into the Option Institute's way of asking questions, or whatever it is. But the service piece—that's the piece to build your business. And, and one thing I want to say, that, and this is something that really occurred to me. I've been getting glimpses of it, and I'm, I'm getting a deeper understanding. And I just want to say this on this webinar is. And I, I I hear it in what you're saying, and I, I, I want to try and make it a bit clearer, is that when service is a technique, it doesn't tend to work, right? Mm-hmm. Or it doesn't work as well. Right. But when service flows from who you truly are, when you get past your ego, mm-hmm. and and that's when that's where service flows from, that's when it's so powerful. So for me, bridging this with the three principles is – the the deeper that the that people in this group understand what the three P's are and how they play out in life, a natural extension of that is service. So for me, one of my realizations has been almost kind of back to front is when I'm not in service, that's something that I'm not seeing about my thinking. I'm not seeing about how I'm creating my reality. Because in those moments, let's say I'm afraid that someone's going to hire another coach than me, it looks like to me that fear is telling me that it's bad, right? That they would hire someone else. And that's not true. That's misunderstanding. That's ego. So I think this is all, all connected. It's all the same. And, um, you know, I, I love that we can bring your, your perspective around that and kind of align it with, with, with this, but you're right. You know, whether someone's a Tony Robbins coach or, a um, you know, option Institute or CTI or energy mm-hmm. leadership, there's so many different types of coaching, but ultimately, the most powerful coaches are the ones that are, are really just serving. And, and that I find is, is just an extension of us when, when we're our true selves. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we, we've got another question. We've got another question from Bram. Sorry, just yeah. want to get this one in. Um, so Bram is, is kind of the opposite of, um, uh, of Helen. He said, I'm 19, so my clock definitely isn't ticking, LOL. I think you've already answered my question, but do you have any more advice for young coaches that are just starting out? I don't really worry about money too much, but I think I can help people more when they pay me. 
not because I get paid, because, but because they'll be in it 100%. Yeah. So any advice? Well, first, I love your 19. I love that age. That was such a great age. What advice could I give you? Well, I, it's the same advice I'd give anybody who's whatever age, which is um, really play, play with this idea of service. Um, be, willing, be willing to go experiment with that and see what that's like for you. Um, I want to just ask, um, Bram or Bram, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your, your name. If, if, I guess I'd rather just do this. If you were, if you were looking for advice around service, what kind of advice would you want? Can you answer that? Is that possible? So Bram, if you, if you. You've got that. Please just, I think it might be a few seconds of delay, but if you can write into the comments box and, and, and answer that question, that could be really helpful. Yeah. So why he's doing that, let me just add to this. So, so for young coaches, it's the same for anybody. Um, stay on the path of learning about service really. Um, and, 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 and continue to be open to learning. You know, it's just what Kush said, which is be willing to, let go of the ego, be willing to return to the place that's really you and be you out in the world because that's what people want. People want to be able to connect with you. People want you to be relatable. People want you to have um, struggles in your past. They want you to be real. They don't want you to be the expert. So that would be some things. Yeah, he doesn't get the question. No worries. Maybe that would be helpful, but be willing to be human. Um, as you're on this journey, don't go and try to be the expert um, and continue, continue to get coached yourself so you can keep growing. Yeah. And, and I would just add as well um, that when, when I started out, I used to have a lot of thoughts around, I, I mean, I was a bit older. I was 30 when I started out and I used to have a lot of thoughts about my age. Like, am I old enough to be a coach? Mm. And, you know, do I know enough or, or anything else? And what I, what I found is that really coaching is not consultancy. And so if I was a consultant, it might, it might be a lot more important to have some experience and some knowledge and some expertise. Um, but coaching, I, I've been coached by some uh, very new coaches who, who necessarily didn't have a lot of experience or anything like that. And, and it's been really powerful coaching, you know, just, um, and, and we hear people like Dick and Bettinger talk about his biggest teacher is his three year old, right? Grandson. So we can, we can learn and see, um, you know, things in other people, if we're not in our egos, you know, and, and when we come from that place as uh, certainly that's what I found as a coach, then that, that age doesn't really, really make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, we'll try and get one more question in. H Helen's asked a few questions. So um, she said, uh, can you truly serve while knowing you're, that you are going to, while knowing you're going to expect to be paid? After all, it's what you do, how you earn your living. Um, I think I might have some little confusion about the purity of motivation. Mm. Okay. Um, here's, here's what I really get that I can, I can really powerfully serve somebody only if they pay me because, um, I can have a couple of really great conversations with someone and I can help them. But the way that I can really serve them is if we're in a paid relationship. And so I know that the highest form of service I can provide is for somebody to pay me because now I can be in their life. I can help them. They have made a commitment to themselves. They made an investment in themselves. And I can speak for myself when I've been coached and I haven't been paying that coaching looks different than when I've plunked down X amount of dollars. And now I've hired somebody to help me. It's almost as if everything clears out of the way and I'm very open and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do. So I really want to see that, that somebody paying me is 
the highest form of service that I can actually provide. So Kush, I don't know what you want to add to that, but, but that's what I see. Yeah. And, and, you know, when I used to hear people say that before, Melissa, I used to be like, that's again, you know, that's self-serving or you would say that or no, just because someone's made you do that, you think you need to do that to other people. Mm. And I've seen it time and time again that what you say is so accurate. And I, I'll give a few examples. So I, I've got a client of mine at the moment who's a coach and he was coaching a lot for free and he'd been doing it for a while. And so I just said, said just start charging something. And he's, we, we've got him to start charging a very small amount, a very small amount, a very low fee. And what he said to me is, number one, he got a bunch of clients in a very short time. He got 10 clients in about two weeks from zero. Um, and secondly, what he said is, oh, my God, the conversations I was having with people before and the moment they paid me has totally shifted. Yeah. And he said he shifted. And and it was it was so clear to him. And I mean, we're, we're talking an extremely low fee, like, you know, very, very low that anyone could afford and yet it changed the relationship and i found that for myself when when i was talking to a friend of mine and he, he was having some struggles and he's a very good friend of mine so we've been talking for like years um and he i said to him you know you need to come to one of my events just just come to my immersion event and he said to me well we talk all the time am i going to get anything different mm -hmm. and i really i really hit me i was like oh, you don't understand what I do. When we're talking as friends and when we have a paid relationship, it's it's different. And he came and he had to take time off work and he had to find someone. He's got his own business. So he had to pay someone to be um, in the business doing the stuff that he does for a few days. It was a commitment in addition to the, to the cost of the course. And he showed up so differently and he learned so much through that. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it's a different piece. And for me also, um, I know it's in my interest and, I, and I've said I pay for coaching. I saw with this recently, again, I went back to a little bit of the, well, you know, maybe it's not fair or, you know, it's not really helping people. And, and every time I do that, I come back to, oh, yeah, it does. It does. And for whatever reason, it's just the way it is. Um, People are committed in a very different way when they pay because money I see is energy and people value that. Mm -hmm. And so you see other people commit. And please don't take Melissa and my word for it. And this is one thing I would say. If if you think we're full of bleep, right, um, which Melissa may have thought in the past if she heard this, which I would have thought of in the past if I heard this, please go and test it out. Mm -hmm. and 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 if someone finds a different way to serve and come back let me know i'm all i'm always up for learning but time and time again this is what i've seen yeah and yeah. so um yeah d j just go and test it yeah. I, don't, I don't know if there's anything you want to add yeah i just want to add that's those are that's a really great example kush um something that i know just just everybody who's listening to this think about what you do when you sit down with a friend and they give you advice or just even think about sitting down with your partner or spouse. Um, how, how, how do you take that information in? Do you do anything with it? Do you take it seriously? Do you use it to transform your life? I mean, I don't think anything my husband said this morning I used to transform my life. You know, it's advice. And that's the relationship. And so it's just a bunch of people sitting around giving each other free advice. So I'll always say to coaches, don't sit there and coach your friends. Don't do that. Because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're helping them, but they're seeing it through this lens of it's just my friend giving me advice. So they're going to do nothing with it. In, this, in the same way, if I show up and say, um, I decide, Kush, you know, you and I are going to coach and I'm just going to give you a bunch of free coaching and we're going to work together. After a while, I'm going to be really resentful. I'm, I'm not being... I'm not getting that energy or that value back for my time. And I'm a professional and I get paid for what it is that I do. And so I'm not helping you because I'm not, I'm not receiving a benefit from this. And I need to be paid for my time because what I deliver is really valuable. So if I'm not willing to receive money in exchange for what it is that I do, I'm going to show up just like you said, Ankush, very differently. 
Um, I might uh, half listen. I might, uh, you know, I don't know, go out and drink the night before and show up hungover. I mean, like, it's just like I'm not treating it in a professional way. So I just want to say that um, I agree with you. Go test it out um, and, and think about your own experiences with family members and friends when they're giving you advice. And what do you do with that? And what the heck, you know, get a hold of a friend and say, I want to pay you $100 and I want you to help me. See if you show up differently. Thank you for that, Melissa. We're, we're out of time. We've got more questions. I knew this always happens, but uh, hopefully we, we, we've answered as much as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've added you to the group as well um, so people can Thank ask you. you stuff there if, 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 if you'll be willing to answer. But if people want to get hold of you, how might they do that? Um, they can email me. You can um, reach me at melissa at melissafordcoaching.com. You can do that. Um, and I'm also on Facebook. You can reach me in that way. Be happy to answer any questions that you have. I know that there are some that haven't been answered and uh, feel free to email me and I'll send you my best response. Thank you. Um, as, as always, people can find me in the group. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, you can find out more about me at my website, which is uncushjane.co.uk. Send me an email, happy to help out. And if you get str struggle to get hold of Melissa, I can, I can put you in touch as well. Thank you so, so, so much, Melissa. It's been such a pleasure to have you with us this evening or this afternoon for you, depending mm -hmm. on where you are in the world. And I know that in addition to the people watching it today, we're, we're going to get um, a lot of people watching this afterwards. So thank right. you on their behalf too. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Kush.